Algebra 2, Section 3.6. Uh, three by three systems, you might say, that is what this uh, lesson is about. Um, quick reminder, matrix multiplication. If you are watching this video in fall of 2020, uh, this is the last thing we did before the shutdown. Uh, we had Chapter 9, and we, uh, we did transformations, and we taught along with that uh, matrices and how to multiply matrices. So what I'm going to say here right now should should re remind you of something you learned back last March. Um, if you're watch watching this in a future year, like fall of 2021, I'm not sure you learned that because uh, some things will be getting cut out of geometry. But either way, uh, it's not essential that you know that, but just, just to kind of get the gist of why what I'm about to teach actually does work. Um, what, you, what you learned, if you did learn this, is that when we multiply matrices, you multiply row by column, row of the first matrix by column of the second matrix. And we literally went like this, row one, column one, would be the multiplication of this row by this column. And you match up the, uh, the pairs, and then you add them together. So two times negative one plus one times two, okay? And then we'd go row one times column two. And again, you're gonna use the two and the one from this, and you're gonna multiply it by this column, that's a zero and one. And then when you're done with uh, row one, then you go to row two and you multiply it by column one, and then you multiply row two by column two. And again, row two is five and nine, like that. So that's row two by column one, and then row two by column two would be like this. Okay, and then we'll just quickly get a result of each, just do the arithmetic on that. And this would be negative two plus two would be zero. Uh, this is zero plus one. This is negative five plus 18 would be 13. And finally, this would be nine. So now the reason this works is because there's compatibility in the number of, of columns here and the number of rows here. They have to match up, right? I have to have a a number here to multiply this by and a number here to multiply these two by and if those numbers don't match. So we come up with then a system of labeling these by their, that's called dimensions, by their uh, rows and columns. And row by column, this would be a two by two. This would be a two by two. And the way we know that we can multiply them is if these two numbers are the same, which is just a different way of describing what I just said about you know there needing to be the right number of numbers. And if that's the case and we can multiply them, then the uh, matrix that you're going to get as an output is going to be this by this. So again, it's two by two. It's a coincidence that we multiply a two by two by a two by two and we get a two by two. That's that's not necessarily the case. You can multiply a, a three by seven by a seven by nine and uh, you'd, you'd end up with a three by nine matrix in that case. Okay. Now, the reason that we did this notation is because it's not only tells you what your row by column matrix you're, you're doing, uh, multiplication that you're doing, it also tells you an address where to put this. Row one, column one is right here. That's where the zero goes. Row one, column two. So row one, column two, that's where this one goes. And then this is 13 and then this is nine. Okay, now that's what you learned uh, prior to this. What I wanna show you now is that you can do much the same thing here. When you multiply row by column, this is a two by two. This is a two by one. Again, this is why we can multiply them our output will be this number by this number. It's going to be a two by one, okay? And that expression, you can't, we can't, we're not gonna be able to add these together because they're gonna be different, um, they're gonna be unlike terms, but you multiply two by X and four by Y, that's row one, column one, there is only one column here. That would be two X plus four Y. Now it's starting to look like algebra, isn't it? And then when I do row two, column one, it's going to be one X, plus six Y, okay? And that could go here. And uh, if we had this equal to another matrix that had numbers in it, well, then we could set these two things equal to each other. It would almost look like an algebra equation, okay? And that's where we're going with this today. All right, so keeping that in mind, take a look here. You so far have solved systems that were what I would call two by two, two variables, um, two equations. And now we're looking at what, what we would call a three by three. There's three variables, three equations. Incidentally, we won't go this far, but uh, a four by four system can be solved. A five by five system can be solved. As, not, as long as there's enough, uh, the same number of equations as there are variables, um, there is 
oftentimes a way to solve it. Sometimes there's there's a you know there's not, but uh, usually those those things have to match. Anyway, that doesn't matter because we're going to just going to do three by three. Now here's the thing: I want to keep this video short. In class, I'll actually do this one by hand. And you think about what you would do: you could look at the second and third equation here, and you could add down like using elimination. And the two z and the negative two z would add up to zero, and you'd have a new system that has eliminated the z. You could do that again with a different set of two equations and come up with uh, that um, uh, another two variable equation that has just x and y in it. Okay, then you could solve that system. It's two equations, two unknowns. Figure out what x is. Go back, figure out what y is when you plug x back in, and then when you have x and y, you could go back to the original and plug in z. Does that sound like a lot of work? Here's here's what their work looks like for this one problem. It's like almost like two pages or two slides of work, if you will. Okay. So you wonder, is there is there an easier way? Well, yes, there is, and it has everything to do with matrices. So let's go back. And uh, I'm not against you if you want to do it this way, but it's a lot simpler if you would use matrices and your calculator. So let me show you. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to make a three by three matrix that has all of these coefficients in it. Okay. So negative five, three, be careful. If you miss one number, or if you miss a negative, the whole thing gets messed up. So be careful and make sure you're writing down the right numbers with their negative signs. If they have a negative sign, I'm even going to double check negative five, positive three, positive two, eight, negative five, two, four, negative seven, negative two. Okay. So that's a three by three matrix. Okay. It's going to get multiplied by a variable matrix, kind of like that two variable one that I showed you on the starboard software. Here we have three variables. The reason there are three is because in this uh, in these equations, you have an X, a Y and a Z. So I need to have an X, a Y and a Z. Again, if you understand matrix multiplication, row one by column one would give you negative five X plus three Y plus two Z. Look here, negative five X plus three Y plus two Z. Okay. Now it's going to be equal to another matrix that's gonna contain these three constants, 11, negative 55, and negative 29, okay? Now you might wonder why did I leave this space here? Well, remember back when life was simple and you were in algebra one and you got uh, one fifth X equals uh, three and you were told to multiply by the reciprocal of one fifth to get X by itself. Uh, you can multiply by, again, the reciprocal or inverse of one fifth which is just multiplying by five and you'd find that X is equal to 15. Okay. Well, in the same way we can multiply, uh, our matrix, our coefficient matrix by its inverse and basically make it go away, basically get the variable matrix by itself. Okay. Now, if you want to see this on your calculator, you're welcome to do it. You don't need to see it in order to get the problem right. But what we do want you to do is model the fact that there is an inverse and we're going to call it a to the negative one. You'll see why it's a in a minute when we get to the calculator. Whatever you do to the left side, you have to do to the right. So that actually goes in both places. And it does need to go to the left. You cannot put these in any order. This is really the, the setup that I should see for every problem on your homework. Let me say that again. This is the setup that you should show for every three by three system that you solve using matrices and your calculator. This is all the work. Okay. If you leave out the inverse, uh, it's probably going to be a minus a half. If you leave out anything else, it's probably a minus one. We really need five matrices. The inverse, but basically what you're showing me is that you know that an operation needs to take place here to get the variables by itself. And then whatever happens here is what happens, right? Because we did this to get the coefficient matrix to um, air quotes, go away and leave you with just X, Y, and Z. So you got to do it to the right side as well. Okay, so now let's jump over to the calculator. And if your calculator is new, your calculator doesn't have this right now. Actually, let me, let's start from the beginning. So if you're like at your home screen, right, your calculation screen, and you select matrix, right, that's right here, second, and then this button right here. Okay, if your calculator is new, these are probably just blank. If your calculator is a hand-me-down from an, an older sibling, then you might have other stuff in here. We want you to change this to a three by three and this one to a three by one. All you do is arrow over to edit and select it, the one you want. And if this, not, if this is not a three and this is not a three, just type over the top and make it a three by three. If it already is a three by three, then just leave it, okay? 
pause the video if you need to, to uh, adjust your calculator. And what I'm going to put in this three by three matrix would be the coefficient matrix that we had in the problem. Negative five. I'm just writing over the top. When I push enter, it jumps to the right. Three, two, eight, negative five, two, four, negative seven, and negative two. And again, you want to be careful when you're typing those in because if you just miss a negative, the whole thing gets messed up. If you accidentally type in a wrong number, the whole thing's messed up. Okay. Now what you want to do is quit. And then you want to go back to matrix and you want to right arrow over to edit again. And this time we want to edit matrix B. So arrow down one, or you can just press two. And again, you want this to be a three by one. If it's not a three by one, make it a three by one. And you're going to put the three numbers that were in the constant matrix. That was 11, negative 55, negative 29. Okay. And then you want to quit again. Now, this is the calculation screen, what is often called the home screen. I'm going to do a matrix multiplication right here. And the matrix multiplication is this right here. This right here is what's happening on your calculator. You see, this is assumed to give us the identity matrix. If I, I'll probably show in class what the identity matrix is. I'm keeping this video short, though. Basically, these two things wipe each other out. We'll assume that's true in the same way that you assume 5 times 1 fifth is 1 in that example I gave. So the variables will get by themselves. What's happening on the calculator is this right here. So we want A inverse, and then we call this one B. You see, we call this matrix A, this is A inverse, and we call this matrix B. So the calculation we're literally gonna do on our calculator is matrix A inverse matrix B. To do that, you select matrix, and now you don't want to arrow over to edit. You just want to pick it right out of this list. Pick A. The inverse is just to the negative 1. To take a reciprocal of something is, by is like taking the power of negative 1. So that's just this button right here. And then go back to matrix again and select matrix B. A inverse B. That's it. Press enter. This is your solution. Negative 2, 5, negative 7. Listed as an ordered triple, negative 2, 5, negative 7, like this. Just like you would an ordered pair, but just three numbers. Negative 2, 5, negative 7. Now, again, if I may, ask the question, which is simpler? This work or all of this that they, should, that they had to show? All this by hand work. See, they got the same answer. I think the matrices have proved to be more efficient. All right, let's, go, let's do one more and let's go faster. Okay, so here we have, make that a little bigger, 1, 2, 5, negative 3, 3, 7, negative 8, 5, 12, a variable matrix of x, y, and z, it's equal to a constant matrix of 1, 4, 11, and then we need to show A inverse. We'll always just use the same two matrix letters on your calculator. We'll just overwrite the numbers, right? A inverse. This is the entire setup. Then we jump over to the calculator. and We're going to enter all that information. So again, what that was was second and then this key right here to go to matrix. We arrow over to edit. We're going to edit our 3 by 3, leave its dimensions. But now we're going to type in these numbers. Double checking. 1, 2, 5, negative 3, 3, 7, negative 8, 5, 12. And then quit. And then back to matrix. And right arrow over to edit. Edit matrix B. Leave it as a 3 by 1. But then put in the new numbers, which are 1, 4, 11. Quit again, and then it's matrix A, inverse, matrix B, enter, negative 1, negative 9, 4, negative 1, negative 9, 4. That's all, and again, I think that's a lot faster than 
uh, what they would do. Let's just roll through their work again on this one just to see. Look at all that. They're not even done yet. Negative one, negative nine, four. Just like what we got. Okay, last thing is just something to look out for. If this is the system that you're given, and I don't know that this system even works. I, uh, I didn't test. I just kind of made these up. Uh, notice that there's nothing here and nothing here. First of all, notice also that the variables are A, B, and C. So in your setup, you're going to have, uh, let's, let's move that down so I can model this for you correctly. <clears throat> you're going to have a three by three, and then you're going to have a three by one. Your variables should not be X, Y, and Z. They should be A, B, and C. Okay. But the point I want to make is that notice that there's a five, a two, and then nothing. you got to hold that place with a zero. And then three, negative eight, one. And then one, 11, negative nine. If there's nothing there like here or even in multiple places, you just fill that place with a, with a zero. Okay. And then again, just as a, a final reminder, your constant matrix is a three by one like this. This is A inverse and you need an A inverse over here. This would be the entire setup for this problem here. All right, thanks for watching, good luck.